Hello, I'm Jeff Armstrong and if you like this video please subscribe to the button below. In this video we're going to take a deeper look at alerts. In the last video we had an initial look at how to set up an alert and some of the functionality around alerts and some best practices if you're setting up an alert for yourself. In the last video we set up an alert against this document library. Now what we may need to do at some point in the future is set up an alert on a specific document. Let's say you're working on a project and a particular document is of interest to you. So let's look at how we would do that. So if we take this document here, Jane's October Sales Report, and we have two choices. We can select it, we don't have to select it, and we can access the Alert Me from here, or we can look at the ellipsis here and select Alert Me. Now once this opens, notice that we get the document library, and then we get this additional information after it and that is telling SharePoint to set an alert to this particular document. Now in the last video we went through all the different settings and the functionality so we're going to just accept the settings as they are and this is going to alert us should any change occur. So let's click OK. And then what we'll do just very quickly is we're going to the document we'll just make one quick change here and we'll save that back now as that saves back what you might notice is in the top right hand corner here is this alert symbol the bell symbol and if I left click that what we get is the beginning of a summary of any alerts that have taken place uh, while we've uh, been inside SharePoint. And this is obviously feeding both uh, from SharePoint and into and into Outlook. So that's going to that's going to give us an idea of also what's going on. Nice, easy, simple in the interface that we're currently in. So no need to navigate anywhere else. So let's go to Outlook. And what we'll see here is, again, that we've set up this alert successfully to this particular, and typical as I'm speaking, <laughs> the alerts come through. So this, this email tells us that we've set up, up an alert for that document. This next email here, and we've got two changes um, I don't quite know why we've got two changes left. Obviously, it's it uh, we, when we opened it and then when we, we saved it back twice. Um, obviously, it's automated, so it will have made that change. So this is telling us that change has been made to that document, and the second one is going to tell us also that the change has been made to that document. And again, we get this nice, easy navigation in here. So let's say we wanted to modify this alert, so let's click on that. It brings us into this panel. Now we looked at this panel in the last video. Now what's interesting and what's different about this panel is we've now got three alerts set up. One for the library, one for the document called Jane's October Sales Report, and one for a document that we haven't named, just document.docx. Now this is really important because I think SharePoint is all about empowering the end user, the person who is going to use the basic functionality within SharePoint. And part of empowering the end user is giving them the ability to manage some of the additional functionality within SharePoint. And, and this is giving the end user the ability to really decide what alerts they want to have, how they want to manage it. So here we have the option, we can add a new alert if we want to. And we also have this option, let's say I don't want all the alerts now coming back off that document library. I can select that and I could just say, look, I want to delete that. I'm going to click OK. And what it's going to do, 
that's going to stop any more alerts on the whole library coming back. I'm still going to get alerts coming back from Jane's October sales report. So if any changes happen there, I'm going to get that back. If any changes happen to document.x, I'm going to get that back. But I'm not going to get any more changes coming back from any other documents that change within that library. And then obviously I can come in here and I can add you know, a new alert and I can decide where in this site I want to add that alert. So I don't just have to add that alert to the one document library. I can add that alert to any of the other apps that we've got. But in this scenario, let's just take a look. So I'm going to add that alert to the document library. I'm going to click next. And we're back into that very familiar interface to say, OK, look here, I want to add that add that next alert. So I think that's quite powerful. It is worth noting also in this interface that you can only delete these alerts in this interface or add an alert. You can't modify these alerts here. So one of the ways, if I, if I left click this, we go into this alert here now, and from here, we can modify that alert for that user. If I cancel, we can go back. So just to recap, we can add a new alert. If we select an option, we can delete alert. And if you click on any one of these, it's going to take you into the interface to be able to modify that alert. So if I take Jane's October sales report and I don't want to see all the changes. I only want to see, I don't want to see my changes because I know because I've made the change. I know the changes happen. But let's say I just want to see if somebody else has made a change to that document. Then I select that option and I click OK. That's going to update this alert. And from then on, that's what I'm going to get coming back. It's quite complex. If you have too many alerts set up and you don't manage them, then you could get an awful lot of information coming through and filling up your mailbox very, very quickly and it can get out of control. And this is where I recommend an architectural approach to how you decide which alerts you want to take, which alerts you want to set up and how you, how you want to manage them. So let's take a bit of a further look at how an administrator may help individual users and groups of users within organisations to manage their emails. So if I go to the cog here and I click site settings, it drops me into this interface and I'm looking at user alerts. Now if I left click on user alerts, what I, what I get back is this interface. Now, we just saw this interface, but from a slightly different perspective. This user is, is an administrator and has administration rights, so they see things differently. And if I select the drop down, what I'll get here is the name of all the different users that have alerts set up in this site. So if I select Jane Johnson and click update, what I'm going to see now is I'm going to see which alerts Jane has set up here. Now notice there's no there's no on click functionality here. I can't click in to these alerts for Jane and make that change. The only option that I've got here is if I select it that I would delete the selected alert and that would remove that alert from Jane and Jane wouldn't get those alerts anymore. So if you have users that aren't comfortable with deciding which alerts they should be receiving or managing alerts, then this option here gives you the ability A, to see what alerts each user has got set up in this site and B, to start removing those alerts. So that's how to remove an alert for users that you're managing. If we go back to the document library and we select alert me, what you'll see here is we get a completely different interface in the send alerts to users. Now here, let's say 
Jane isn't comfortable setting up her alerts, or we don't want Jane to set up her, her alerts, one or the other. Um, what we could do here is simply type in Jane's name and add her in. Now any users that are in this box will receive an alert to this library and based on all of these settings. So this is how you could set up alerts for more than one person. So you could put many people's names in here or you could set up an alert for an entire group. If you've set up an entire a group within SharePoint or Office 365, you simply add the group's name here and they would receive the emails based on the configurations here and that would that would set up those alerts for those people. Obviously they would still be able to granularly edit those alerts should they wish to um, in the manner and the fashion that we've shown and the administrator could come in and remove alerts back on that previous page by going through the site settings option. So hopefully this has shown you both in terms of some of the advanced functionality with it, with alerts and also how administrators could set up and manage alerts for people within an organisation. If you enjoyed this video, please press the subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.